The person in the Gojira suit was unknown at the time, but the story the actor has with Gojira is odd. This is a photo of him in the suit. Here is another picture. He got the acting job of being and wearing the Gojira suit, and the actor fell in love with it. He would wear the suit most of the time, even to the point that you never saw his actual face. Even when we take breaks, he would just wear the suit. The suit would sometimes heat up, but he didn't care. It was like he was addicted to the suit. Like, if it's calling his name. It's gotten to the point where he brings the suit home even though we tell him not to. He wouldn't really speak a lot, but he would say that his name is Goji. Basically the nickname we gave to the suit. The last time he was seen on set, he was acting in the suit until he just stopped. This is the photo that was taken. Several minutes later, he would start to walk and stop again. His breathing was muffled, yet he was also breathing oddly. The director thought this was a joke, poking at him to get him back into place, but he wouldn't budge. After two minutes of oddly breathing, the director would tell people to check on him and to make sure he takes off the suit. This was the photo someone took before the person saw what was inside. The man opened the costume to see that the actor was growing into the suit. His flesh would slowly rip away as he tried to open the pocket where actors would enter the suit. This suit was now his skin. Somehow his body deformed to the point that he was filling the inside of the suit. This is what they expected. This is what they found. Whoa! A man who was hypnotized or somehow addicted to a Godzilla suit to the point that it enraptured his entire psyche, causing him to never leave it and become the lizard monster in his mind, eventually leading to his flesh melding with the suit itself. I mean, who hasn't been there? It's just a regular Tuesday for me. While the concept of a man meeting a horrible fate such as flesh fusing with a Godzilla suit is horrifying, it is in no way unprecedented. Fun fact that I stole from a commenter on the original video, this was based on an actual accident of the suit while filming, where they needed to trigger some explosions in the suit. This sounds dangerous in the first place, but it caused the actor and the suit to be electrocuted. But he was okay after some medical care. Well, that wasn't really fun, but it was a fact. Evidently, when Godzilla was a monster played with suits and practical effects rather than CGI and Hollywood execs that inject children's blood in their eyes or whatever the hell makes Godzilla nowadays, the suit was really dangerous. And there were several hazards related to being inside of it. The most notable guy that almost died several times in a lizard suit while pretending to destroy a city was one Hero Nakajima, whose name I definitely just butchered. Throughout starring as Godzilla in 12 movies, he survived survived heat stroke, head trauma, electrocution, and getting burned like a bajillion times. But he just kept getting back in the suit. <laughs> this is the most wholesome source material for an analog horror I've ever seen if we discount all the safety negligences that put him in those situations in the first place. I mean shit, if I got paid a crap ton and got to be famous to pretend to be a big angry iguana, I'd hold on to that job for dear life too. It's not actually so different to from what I do now, it's just less dangerous. Getting back to the analog horror itself, that's gonna be one ridiculous open casket if they can't detach the goddamn magical dinosaur suit. He died doing what he loved, pretending to be a giant insurance gecko or some shit. It appears that the Godzilla suit had a psychological hold over the man's mind. Gojira enraptured every waking thought. He wanted to become one with the Gojira. Gojira was him, and he was Gojira. His flesh liquefied so it could fit into every fold of the suit until he was no more, and there was only Gojira. In my opinion, they shouldn't have pulled him out of the suit because I think he was just halfway through his Godzilla metamorphosis. He was just in the sludge phase. If he got fully melded, they would have had a free Godzilla actor for like, ever. Or at least until technology could make a better one, and then in that case, we'll just toss this goober in the soup. I believe this analog horror could be a metaphor for the struggles of fame and character. It exemplifies in an exaggerated fashion what can happen when someone has to fit themselves into a box, or, a giant lizard suit, let's say, to repeatedly get the attention of the masses. Human beings are not characters or brands. When one receives mass adoration for something fictional, the pressure to adhere to those sometimes impossible concepts can be painful, even damaging. This analog horror exemplifies the slow and constant toll that can take by melting the man slowly as he plays his role, like a candle melting from the wick. But hey, I'm a YouTube creator that definitely is and always was 100% an unknowable eyeball thing. And when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And they all lived happily ever after, unless they happen to not want that guy to be a melted popsicle Godzilla man. 
The end. Anyways, if you like this video and want me to come and check out more analog horror, you should like, comment, subscribe with all notifications enabled, and go watch all my other videos, or I'll melt you into a Godzilla suit. I want to shout out the original creator of this amazing project. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. Oh, <laughs>